Thanks for the nice introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back from your lunch break. Today, my talk is about biopharmaceutics classification system class three waiver. Disclaimer: This presentation reflects the views of the author and should not be construed to represent FDA's views or policies. The first learning objective is to elaborate the current biopharmaceutics classification system BCS Class III waiver as an alternative bioequivalence approach. The second learning objective is to discuss research related to future BCS Class III waiver expansions. There is a FDA guidance for industry waiver of in vivo bioavailability and bioequivalent studies for immediate release solid oral dosage forms based on a biopharmaceutics classification system, which was published in 2017, as well as the International Council of Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use, ICHM9 guideline biopharmaceutics classification system based Biovivers, which was published in 2019. BCS is a scientific framework for classifying drug substances based on aqueous solubility and intestinal permeability. A drug substance is classified as highly soluble when the highest single dose is soluble in no more than 250 ml of aqueous media over the pH range from 1 to 6.8. The volume required to dissolve drug substance is referred as the BCS volume. A sufficient number of different pH values should be selected based on ionization of drug substance, for example, pH at pKa, pH at pKa plus or minus 1, pH at 1, and the pH at 6.8. However, please keep that in mind. The pH that you choose should stay within the physiological range. A drug substance is considered as highly permeable when the systemic bioavailability or the extent of absorption in human is determined to be 85% or more of an administered dose based on a mass balance or in comparison to an intravenous reference dose. There are four classes of BCS drug substances. As shown in this table, it has clearly delineated the class boundaries. BCS class 1 drug substance has high permeability and high solubility. BCS class 2 drug substance has high permeability but a low solubility. BCS class 3 drug substance has low permeability but high solubility. BCS class 4 drug substance has a low permeability as well as a low solubility. If the immediate release oral solid drug product contains a drug substance with high solubility, either BCS class 1 or 3 drug substance, the rate and extent of drug absorption will not depend upon dissolution and or gastrointestinal transit time. It may not be necessary to demonstrate in vivo bioavailability or bioequivalence as long as the exhibits in the formulation do not significantly affect absorption of drug product. Therefore, BCS biovivers can certainly serve as beneficial effective alternative bioequivalence approaches for immediate release oral solid drug product. Not only just to reduce the drug development costs, but also reduce the unnecessary human drug exposure. Eventually, it will expedite the process to promote generic drug development and approval. FDA does publish product-specific guidance, PSG, for individual drug product to provide bioequivalence recommendation. 
Now, what is the relationship between BCS waiver option and the PSG? Here is a general practice for PSG. Once the drug substance is classified as either BCS class 1 or 3 drug substance, we will add BCS waiver recommendation to the corresponding PSG. At the current FDA PSG website, there are 33 published PSGs containing BCS class 1 waiver option and one PSG containing BCS class 3 waiver option. What happens if the BCS waiver option is not provided in the current PSG? That only means the drug substance has oh. not been classified. However, the BCS waiver can be still requested. What about the BCS waiver in future? As there are so many drugs with high solubility are potentially eligible for BCS waiver, we strongly recommend and encourage applicants should show their due diligence by providing the agency with sufficient supportive information for their waiver requests. In order to be eligible for BCS class 3 based bio waiver, what are the criteria that you need to meet? As per the FDA BCS guidance for BCS class 3 drug products, the following should be demonstrated. First, highly soluble. BCS volume should be less than or equal to 250 ml aqueous media over the pH range from 1 to 6.8. Second, very rapidly dissolving across multiple pH media. As the innovators of many older reference products have not submitted the dissolution data in multiple pH media, the applicant need to first determine if the reference product is rapidly dissolving across the pH range. Therefore, we recommend the applicant first to determine very rapidly dissolving for the reference product across multiple pH, then to demonstrate very rapid dissolving for the test product across multiple pH. Last, the test product should be qualitatively Q1 the same and quantitatively Q2 very similar to the reference product. In terms of BCS3 formulation similarity assessment, as per FDA BCS guidance, the allowable differences for Q2 very similar are the following. Changes in the technical grade of an exhibit. Changes in exhibits as weight by weight percentile should stay within the following percentage ranges as described in this table. The total additive effect of all exhibits should stay within 10%. For the exhibit that may affect drug absorption should not go beyond 10%. The applicant may submit controlled correspondence for eligibility of BCS class 3 waiver. Here is what you should do. You may request if your proposed test formulation is eligible for BCS class 3 waiver. However, you shouldn't just simply ask if your proposed test formulation is Q1 the same and Q2 very similar to the reference product. Please keep that in mind. The approvability of the BCS waiver request is an assessment issue and the final decision will be determined upon the scientific evaluation of the complete AND submission. There are potential challenges in applying BCS class 3 waiver. The agency has initiated multiple research projects to further investigate and address these challenges. Currently, two key limiting factors are subjects of research. First, to meet the criteria for very rapid dissolution. As I mentioned earlier, the dissolution testing data in multiple pH media for many old reference products are not available. We have ongoing internal collaborative research project 
to generate solubility and the multiple pH media dissolution testing data for immediate release oral solid drug product with BCS3 potential. Second, to meet the criteria for formulation similarities, we have contracted with absorption systems expanding BCS class 3 waivers for generic drugs to non-Q1, Q2 formulations. Ongoing grant by using physiologically based pharmacokinetic absorption modeling as an alternative bioequivalence approach to support BCS class 3 waiver. Internal research project to assess the formulation similarity of approved generic drug products with BCS3 potential. Here is an example of our published collaborative research. Cimetidine and acyclovir were used as a model BCS class 3 drugs in four-way crossover bioequivalent studies in healthy subjects. This study was intended to evaluate the potential impact of 14 commonly used exhibits in larger than conventional amounts on the absorption of BCS class 3 drugs. Overall, 12 common exhibits were found in larger amounts which do not impact BCS class 3 drug absorption in vivo. They don't need to be the Q1 the same nor Q2 very similar to the reference product, but the rather simply be no more than the quantities or amounts of exhibits used in the study. Meanwhile, two exhibits, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose and uh, microcrystalline cellulose, need to be Q1 the same and Q2 very similar to the reference product. In addition, we have a grant on effects of exhibits in generic drug products on intestinal drug transporters to study transporter interaction with exhibits by screening of exhibits that are potential inhibitors for intestinal transporters in membrane vesicles and cells, including p glycoprotein, breast cancer resistance protein, and organic A9 transporting polypeptide to B1. Now I would like to share our internal research project on formulation assessment of drugs with BCS class 3 potential. First, we retrospectively collected the formulation data in approved generic products that have successfully demonstrated in vivo bioequivalence. Then we compare the compositions between the generic and its corresponding reference drug products to explore the potential impact of exhibit changes on in vivo bioequivalence outcome. The drug products used in this project are listed in the following table. All 13 drug substances are highly soluble with low or moderate permeability ranging from 10% to 83%. A total of 134 approved ENDAS were examined for this 13 potential BCS class 3 drug substances. They are either tablet or capsule. By comparing the generic formulation to its corresponding reference formulation, we have divided the generic formulations into four groups. Group 1, Q1 same, Q2 same. Group 2, Q1 same, Q2 very similar. Group 3, Q1 same, Q2 different. Group 4, Q1 different. If you look at the pie chart shown here, among a the total of 134 approved ANDAs, 5% of the generic formulations in approved ANDAs were Q1, Q2 the same to the corresponding reference product. 20% were Q1 the same and Q2 similar to the corresponding reference product. 
if you add those two groups together, about 25% of all, they do meet the BCS Class 3 bowel waiver criteria set in the FDA BCS guidance, which ensure the in vivo bowel equivalence as demonstrated in the approved ANDAs. On the other hand, 18% of the generic formulations or Q1 the same and Q2 different to the reference product. And 57% uh, were Q1 different. If you add the, these two groups together, it count about 75% of all. They do not meet BCS class 3 biolabor criteria as set in uh, FDA BCS guidance. However, the in vivo bio equivalences between the generic and the corresponding reference product have been demonstrated in the approved ANDAs. It seems the observed Q1, Q2 formulation differences in exhibits would not impact their in vivo bio equivalence performance in this 75% of all ANDAs. Therefore, Formulation similarity assessment criteria for BCS class 3 waiver may be warranted for further investigation. A total of 42 exhibits have been assessed in this research project. This table just shows the top 20 common exhibits. Preliminary assessment number one. Meeting the criteria for BCS class 3 based waiver does ensure bioequivalent performance in vivo. Number two, an observation of changes in exhibits is based upon the approved generic drug product formulations. Number three, it doesn't mean this exhibits in the stated amount can be used in all BCS class 3 drug products. Number four, ongoing project to further determine if more general conclusions can be drawn from this data set. In summary, BCS guidance should be referred to assess if the drug may be eligible for BCS class three waiver. BCS class three waiver can be requested even though the current PSG does not include such recommendation. Controlled correspondences can be submitted to requests if the proposed test formulation is eligible for BCS class 3 waiver. Research on dissolution, modeling, and exhibits continues to provide more opportunities in the future for using BCS class 3 waiver as an alternative bioequivalence approach. Challenge question. If the current PSG does not include the recommendation of BCS class 3 waiver, can the generic firm submit its waiver request? I will give you a couple seconds to think about it. Okay, if your answer is A, you are absolutely right. Now I would like to thank Dr. Ping Ren. Dr. Teresa Chen and Dr. Wen Cheng Yang from the research team, as well as Dr. MJ Kim, Dr. Lei Zhang, and Dr. Rob Weinberger from the management team. This will conclude my presentation today. I'll be back to the panel for Q&A session later. Thank you very much. I'm turning it over to our next speaker, Dr. Fang Wu.